So what I'm going to just start with is three things I wanted to reiterate when I talk to my customer. Serverless is actually not serverless. You have server, OK? Just keep that in mind. It's not your responsibility, but it's the vendor's responsibility who provides the, the functionality to you. Code, cloud, when you talk about cloud, we think that we get rid of the data center. It's actually not, right? you still have the data center, again, managed by somebody. And the last thing, most confusing, SaaS is not serverless. Because SaaS, most of the time, gives you the package solution. You don't write code on top of it. You don't write customization on top of it. Hence, it is not serverless. Serverless is where you write the code. It's the ownership of you when you write the code, right? Three things. Just keep that in mind. So what I'm going to achieve in this stage with this short span of time is that I'm going to take the Twitter. You, many of you know that nowadays that MeToo hashtag is quite popular. It's all about harassment happening around, right? And it, there are billions of tweets happening. And I'm going to take that MeToo hashtag and then put it in our Azure serverless component called Logic Apps. What this Logic Apps is really, it is a workflow engine which helps you get things and do something, pass it on. So it's like an orchestrator you can think of. And I'll use the serverless function, which we call Azure function. Think of it like AWS Lambda, similar to that. And then I will do a little bit of cognitive AI implementation on top of those tweets to figure out what is the sentiment behind that tweet, whether it is negative, positive, what is the rating of that tweet text? I haven't written that code. It is already available as Cognitive Services API, which we call as AI engine from Azure. And we'll, we'll leverage that, and then we'll push that into another serverless component called Cosmos DB. So Cosmos DB is a NoSQL database from Azure. And then based on the scenario, you can think of like if the tweet is really, really bad, why don't you raise a ticket within your CRM system so that people associated with the product knows about it? Right? Let's try to do that. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to my, let me stop this. OK? So this is my Azure portal, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to my Azure resource group. And here, increase the font. OK, let me try doing that. Is it OK? Visible? Clear? I'm not going to get into inside of this. I will create something on, in front of you. So what I'm going to do is that I'll click on Add. So what this gives me a lot of option to add. So let me choose the one which I'm going to add. So, if, so I'll pick up the logic app, which is the orchestrator engine, and I say create a logic app. That's the starting point. And once the logic app is open, so I'll say SWG123, just the name. And I leave it to Southeast Asia, which is our APAC data center. And then it gets and creates the, the workplace for the, the workflow. So this tells me the deployment status. Once this is done, I can go and design that. So it's pretty quick, because it don't have to deploy any server or anything of that sort. So it's basically creating the, the, the container for me. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to pick up a blank logic app so that we can start from scratch. So when I say blank logic app, it gives me an option, what is the, the event trigger, which is what tr will trigger this logic app, whether it's an application which will call this logic app, whether it's something external, let's say you enter something in a database, and then this logic app gets triggered. What is the trigger? So in previous session, you have heard of the importance of trigger, right? So 
this is what I'm picking up the trigger. So I pick up the trigger from here as Twitter, which is easy for me to now pick it up because it's already getting filled by other people. I don't have to fill it. I pick up the Twitter. For you, for me, it will not because I have done the authentication already into this resource group. But for you, it will just pop up a resource uh, login related details. And then once it pops up, you just enter the login details. I have already done that, so you can see. Now here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use this me too. This is most popular tag today, hashtag. And I define that interval as, let's say, 15 seconds. Yeah? In server is not that popular. I check this now. People are not tweeting. OK? <laughs> they will not solve our purpose. So, and then I'll add that when the tweet comes, fine. Tweet comes, I can put the tweet as is to the database. It doesn't really make sense. What I can do, I can add additional steps into that. It's like process that tweet, raw tweet, into something meaningful in, in, for my business or for my solution. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use something called text analysis. This is a Microsoft Cognitive Services AI API, which allows you to pass any text, and it tells you what is the sentiment behind the text. You can do a sentiment analysis. You can figure out what is the language of that. You can uh, extract the keywords of that from the text. So from a sentence, what are the important words? You can pick up those things. So these are all available API. So I don't have to write code for that. So I'll pick up the text analysis, and then I, this asks me, what is the text I want to analyze? Now you can see that it picks up from the, the previous step what all things I get as part of my data set from Twitter. So I get all these things. So just, to, just in case you are not able to see it, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run something which, is hell, which will help me expand this view a little better. So you can see here, these are the, the properties I'm getting from Twitter when I read a tweet. What I get, I either get a Twitter description, location, who tweeted, what is the tweet text, when it was created, how many followers you have, how many retweets, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So I can pick up that tweet text from here, right? And then I can just finish it up. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just pass on the tweet text so that this will start doing the sentiment analysis. So I'll go back to the previous step and add one more step. Is when I'm going to push that tweet and the sentiment back to a data source so that I can later on analyze. I can also send this into any internal system. So you can see that we have around 200 connectors available. So these connectors are basically available below. You can pick up any connector and then start working with it. So you can send data to a SQL Server database, to an Oracle database, to a Document DB, to a MongoDB, anything of that sort. You can also build your own connector to send something to your own specific source. So what I'm going to do is that, let me pick up the Cosmos DB. So I'll pick up the Azure Cosmos DB. This is again a serverless component. And then I pick up this Cosmos DB. And it asks me to enter a few details. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get these details from my Cosmos DB created before. Because Cosmos DB creation takes little time, so I have created that blank database already for you. So let me go here. Go to the resource group. I pick up the, the Cosmos DB created before. Do we have a Cosmos DB created? We don't have a Cosmos DB. OK. So what I'll do, I'll just pick up the SQL Server database. That should be fine. Right. OK. So I'll pick up the SQL Server. We don't have a Cosmos DB. Cosmos DB creation takes 10 minutes time. So I'll just get rid of this. And I pick up the SQL Server. I do have a demo, so I'll show you. I'll not disappoint you with the demo I, I promised. So I'll say SQL Server, and then 
it gives me an option to insert a row. You can also use API to insert the row if you don't want to talk to database directly, which is not a good practice. And then you can pick up the name of the table from here. So you can see that, just getting loaded. So I just put the connection details again. It, it for, forgot the connection details. So I'll say that's the connection details, and then say connect. OK, hopefully it is connected, because it is not showing any error. And then this should show me the tables available in that SQL Server. Give me a quick moment. So I already have a tweet data table created, which has got few uh, columns defined inside the database. So I, what I can do, I can pick up things from my data set, which I have received from Twitter. So sentiment score comes from my AI output. So you can see that the icon says AI output, so it's fine. Score comes up. And then tweet user. Who is the tweet user? So I can say name of the tweet, tweet user, right? And tweet text. I'll say tweet text. I just leave the keywords as blah. So I don't have keywords extracted. So I'll say tweeted on. So it basically is created. So give me a quick moment. I'll just reduce that. It otherwise, it doesn't show over here. So I'll say created at. That's the one. And then. I put the follower count, how many followers that user has, because I want to identify what is the impact. If I do a tweet versus uh, Donald Trump does a tweet, there's a lot of difference, right? So I'm done. So what I have done is that I've taken a tweet, I did a sentiment analysis, I figured out the score. I don't have to read every tweet to understand the sentiment. I figured out the score, and then I push that into database, done. So I'll, what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and save that, and it gives me an error, because there's something missing over here. So let me see that. Change the connection, text analysis demo, and then I say save. Yeah, it is done. Now when I say run, just to test, it's like F5 in Visual Studio. You do run your code when you are done with the code. I run. This workflow actually tells me step by step. So the more complex the workflow is, it, it, it looks very beautiful, to be very frank. So, and then it's, it says that it is done. Now it will show up this. And you can see that green boxes, check boxes over here, are the, are the one, right, which actually are basically the steps which got finished, right? And then if you go inside each of this step, you can also analyze what exactly happened, what tweet came. So this is something, I think, it's French, that somebody tweeted about Me Too, and the tweet came. This is the name of the person. And then all these fields I, I was capturing, I got it in this list. But I'm not capturing everything, by the way, because I'm only storing the tweet text, and once I have the tweet text, I go into the sentiment analysis, it takes the tweet text, and then it gives me a score of 0.5, which is quite positive. 
below 0 0.03 is something which is critical, but 0.5 is quite positive. And then if you go into the database, this is also successful, by the way, so which means that I, we should have now more data into database. We'll figure out that. We'll go to the database and figure it out. So we get this, this data as entered with a tweet username, tweet text, keywords, blah, blah, blah. This is I, I hard-coded. And then you have tweeted on. That's the date time value you get and the followers. So what now I'm going to do is that I'm going to go back to my database. This is my database. I open up my, in my SQL Server Management Studio. I can also build an application to show it, right? Like previously Ganesh showed an application, so we can do, do that. So I can connect my local SQL Server Management Studio to connect to my Azure database. That's quite possible. Nothing fancy about it. This is the feature which we should have. And then what we can do, we can go to the tables and then say extract 1,000 rows. You get the tweet, right? I pick up the last one. Probably the, the one last ones are the one which are getting tweeted now. So let me go a little down. So let me just increase this font size. So you can see the tweets coming up. Notifications. Excuse me for a second. OK. So you can see that these are the tweets which, are, which have happened recently. And you can also figure out the sentiment score of these tweets. If I go here at the end, you can see the score 0 0.5, 0 0.000. This is pretty bad. People might have abused. <laughs> you don't know, right? So don't read all of them because sometimes they will really abuse. So I don't want to show all the text here. But the sense is it can be any event. I, I've taken Twitter because it's a ready-made event. Somebody is hitting already. So I have leveraged their power. But you can have an event like somebody checks in. Checks in the code. I'm talking about the, the developer community checks in the code. You can trigger something. So we can do a trigger. And then as soon as somebody checks in, I can notify and do something in between, sort of like you think about DevOps. So Logic App and the serverless engine is capable of triggering all this beautiful engine together by reading some events from somewhere. It can be anywhere. But when I say it can be anywhere, you need to use the connector to be able to talk to that. And if you don't have a readily available connector, what you can do, you can use HTTP endpoints or webhooks. These are typically available for all the resources. You can leverage them as is. It's like a, a sort of like a native way of interacting with uh, external sources if you don't have readily available connectors like what we have seen. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to enhance it a little bit. And I have created another demo already in another subscription. And I'll just open that engine over here. And I'll show you a little bit of internal what exactly happens. So these things keep on happening. I have given it a five second delay. So every five seconds, there is something happening. So instead of that, what you can do, you can increase that capacity. You can make it a time bound. You can make it a trigger. Only when somebody hits or calls a webhook, you basically do the functionality. It, it is capable of storing the historical data. So these are all done things. So it is already done. So if I have any issue during the execution, I'll fi find a red cross icon instead of green checkbox. So I can go and find what exactly happened wrong. I figured it out today morning because I was using Cognitive Services API, which is a free tier, and it exhausted the count limit. The number of calls I could make, it exhausted. Because yesterday night, I created this demo, and it exhausted over the period of time. So it was giving me error. I was, I was in panic because I was getting ready for this demo. Then I went into the historical data, and I figured out that the license is stopping me. It's a bad request. Error is coming up. And it was written clearly that I don't have a limit to call this API anymore, which is quite clear to me. I don't have to be a great uh, mastermind to be able to figure it out. It gives me all these details. So luckily, I don't have any error. So 
So you won't find anything probably over here. But if you have an error, this will be a red alert, and you can go and check that. And these are all, all stored in Azure already. Historical executions are stored in Azure. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go ahead and then show you this option, which has got this one. And it is quite similar to what I have done. So I'll go to the edit mode and so that designer comes up. And this designer tells me that when a tweet is posted, I detect the sentiment, I extract the key phrases, which gives me an array of string, and then I put that into document DB because I created a document DB. I, instead of SQL Server, I put it in a document DB. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to this document DB inside my resource group and then show you the record, how it looks like. I love the, love the way they represent the data. So I go to this document DB, and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to pick up the document DB database. So let me just pick it up again. Yep. So I picked up the connector. So I pick up the document DB, and then I, it has a data explorer. This is a, a browser-based way of how you read the data. It's a JSON data, so no SQL database. So you will find the document da database will have now records inside all of these documents. So this is also running parallelly. So you can see that this is my entry to the document DB. This is somebody in, from China did a me too uh, tweet. So you can try with the hashtag me too tweet and you'll find every now and then people are doing tweets. This is, this is quite, quite interesting to know. It's not just third, third world countries, it's also so-called first world countries, they're facing the similar challenges. Okay? So, uh, and then this is, this is the, the NoSQL representation. Think of you putting it in a MongoDB. Or, or in any NoSQL database, you can pretty much do that. And you can build an application on top of it, build an AI, build an engine. In fact, we have done that internally for our own product team. Anybody does any bad tweet about Azure using hashtag Azure, Microsoft Azure, or Windows Azure, any of these three tags, it gets passed on to the product team directly through Logic Apps. So what they have built as an application is that they have created a similar environment, but there are teams available. Based on the keyword they extract, they understand that which product, because Azure is a set of services, so they pick up the product and send the notification to Microsoft Teams. How many of you are aware of Microsoft Teams? Okay, cool. So you're from Microsoft, I know. <laughs> so Microsoft Teams is like a collaboration uh, tool which helps you bring in multiple people within the organization, and you can build a team. So you can do discussion, you can upload a document, you can edit live, you can have a meeting, you can take a note, everything remains in one place. Once you log into the team, you, can, you see everything what you have done in a specific activity. So you can define channels, you can define specific activity, let's say you do a morning session, evening session, all these things you can define. And here we are pushing all those bad tweets with the sentiment 0.03, less than 0.03 into this uh, tool, and then people are really watching it. So you don't have to watch these millions of tweets. It's not possible to watch, because Twitter never gives you the similar result the moment you log in here and there. It doesn't give you that. So you need something which keeps on pop pulling the record and then filter it out for you, for your team, for your specific interest. So this is what one solution we leverage internally to improve the user experience. So that's what we say a customer voice. So if you say anything bad about Azure, that's being taken care of seriously. So at the end of the day, Scott Gothry calls that VP and says that, what is happening here? That happens, actually. It's not fun. So, um, so this is what I wanted to show. One thing I wanted to add over here, we have seen logic apps, we have seen cognitive services, we have seen document DB. What about attaching something like functions? So I tried to attach a small function, which looks like this. I'm not sure how meaningful it is, but what it does, it takes 
an array, a JavaScript array, and then it splits it and then makes a single string, comma separated. This is what exactly it's done for our Azure solution we talked about. So we do use the Cognitive Services API, and we use the key phrases um, method within that API to extract those things, and then we join them, make it a single string with a comma separated instead of array. Reason why is that, I'll tell you why. If you use this Cognitive Services, let me just, if you use this, let me go back to the stage where I have used the Cognitive Services. If we go to the serverless and pick up the, the market analysis, this is where I've taken this function approach and leverage this function. I click on the edit, which shows me the design. Now, I detect the sentiment. I take the key phrases and pass it on a function. I can do it in line also, but I just for demo's sake, I've taken this. So what I have done, I've passed the key phrases, which is an array, to this function, which is an Azure function. And it, it is in my subscription already written. So where it is written? It is written over here in this resource group, same resource group I'm talking about. And then I have got something called functions. So let me pick it up. Do it function. I've defined this function. A JavaScript base, you can define a function using C Sharp as well. Uh, so I have defined a function using JavaScript. And then I'll show you the function, how it has been written. Let me just let figure it out how many functions it has. It has only one. Never mind. So you get a function like this. right? Let me just increase the font size so that you can clearly see it. So that's the same function I showed you before. So it takes an array, makes it a string. right? That's a simple thing. I wanted to show you that when you need to transform anything, think of, of that way, you can leverage function, a small amount of code, and do things. You can also interact with external sources. You can pass this thing from here to a document DB. It's quite possible to do that. So we have just done that similar step here. And then after this is done, I take the data and pass it on to SQL Server. So you can see that it is now getting into SQL Server. I can also take a call based on the sentiment I have received. So I can put a condition, which is at a condition. And this condition says that if my score did, uh, yeah, score is less than, bear with me, is less than something, I'll just save it, then it should go off. I've seen this, this comes with a designer. There is a bug, I believe. Yep, so the condition comes up. Let me just open up again. Is less than 0 0.03, then add some action. Then send a notification to the owner of this activity, right? Else you just save it or do nothing. So that's the kind of if-else condition you can do. You can also do run through a loop. So if you're getting a lot of things like key phrases, which is basically an array, you can run through a loop. So you can also do a loop. So you can see over here in this process, what it allows you to do is that it allows you to enhance really this simple workflow into anything you can think of. Have you ever used BizTalk, design a BizTalk solution? So you know how complex it can go. So Logic App is a cloud version of what BizTalks offers today, right? So I can, I can take this action, and I say add a for each. So if you get a lot of record, right, you can do a for each loop. Now, this is what it gives you at the end of the day is a designer. There is no code. Now, if somebody asks, where is my code? The code is all in JSON in form of ARM. 
So if you go into this Twitter analysis, which I have created, it gives you an automation script. This is the code. So you can take a backup of this code. In fact, in Visual Studio 2017, which we have released recently, you have got an ability to add a designer for Logic App, and you can design from Visual Studio and deploy it from there. You don't have to do it here. So it gives you the complete thing. So this is completely a JSON-based code. You can take a backup of the code, put it in source control, do anything of that sort. So we also give you power to define this using PowerShell. So if you are more of a scripting guy, DevOps guy, you can do it PowerShell. You can do it in a native .NET way as well. right? You can write a simple .NET code, bringing in quite a few libraries, and then you can write this code. So what you additionally need to do is your all your subscription ID, key, which you definitely need to um, mask it, because you should not put all of them into the code. But for demo purpose, I can put it. And then I can start executing this code, and it will give me the same result. In fact, it, it will deploy the, in fact, it will deploy the same Logic App to Azure and then start deploying from there, not from my machine. Logic App is a cloud-only solution. You also have an option to run it on Ruby. So you do provide the Ruby support as well. Right? Uh, so this is one thing. Any questions? I think I'm, I'm almost at the end of. Yeah. What is the risk of kicking? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we can do that. So there is a Power BI integration. Yeah, we can, we can integrate to a Power BI. And Power BI gives you a dashboard capability. Being a business user, you don't need to be a business analyst, so to say, or a BI expert, business intelligence expert. It, I don't know business intelligence. I can still build a Power BI report. You can put a, our map and then map will point to the location. So you can mark a red, all these things. So in fact, our Azure dashboard is built on top of Power BI. We leverage that capability. So in the connector, we have an ability to pass the data. I was passing the data to a database. You can pass it to a Power BI streaming data source, which means that constantly will we'll come to the Power BI, and Power BI dashboard will keep on refreshing it. So you can have a large screen, and then Power BI refresh will happen as and when data comes in. You don't have to hit any refresh button. Quite possible. So last thing, yeah, any question or coming, yeah. All right, yeah. So it's done. Yeah, one question I can take, yeah. Two things. Web job uses the same worker process, WP, W3 process, of your web apps. So if you're also running a UI, the web application, in the same web job, then remind it that if it is a too heavy web job, it is actually leveraging the power of the existing server. So your web application may get slower, but if it is only dedicated web job, it's fine. Web job, if it is too complicated, you have lots of lines of code written inside a web job method, then it's not identical for a function, because function is a very small amount of execution. right? So let's say you are doing 300-line code execution. That's definitely not ideal for functions. So you have to split them into small pieces. Yeah. And then you have to also take care of the, the, the sequence of the execution if you're splitting it into multiple functions. If anything breaks, how you roll it back to the previous state. Yep, I am done.